Hi everyone, thanks for joining me today. What I want to talk about today is uh, something that we call um, a resonant series circuit. Now, uh, resonant series circuit, this is uh, something that occurs in a series RLC circuit. So a circuit where we have resistance, inductance, and capacitance. Now what that means, a resonant circuit, it's, it's actually speaking about the frequency. It's saying that the frequency is such that within that circuit, our XL and our XC are equal. And that's the big thing to remember here. XL equals our XC. That's what a resonant circuit is. So the frequency has, has gotten to a point where our XL and our XC are equal, right? And here's our formulas for XL and XC. We know XL is 2 pi FL and XC is 2 pi FC or 1 over 2 pi FC. So we know we can't change the L or the C. Those are the physical properties of the inductor and the capacitor. But what happens is as we adjust that frequency, our XL and our XC change, right? Opposite to each other. And there comes a point when they will be equal to each other. And that is when a series circuit is operating in resonance or it's a resonant series RLC circuit. Now this is a big deal and a lot of stuff happens when this happens. So let's take a look at this uh, circuit right here. We got a hundred volt source. Now let's just pretend, and these are made up numbers. They're a little bit unrealistic, but this is just an example of what would happen. So let's say our R is 10 ohms, our XL is 100 ohms, and our XC is 100 ohms. So we have all those ohmic values. Now we can take those and I like to put those onto a impedance diagram for the circuit. So it looks something like this. There's an impedance diagram for the circuit. We said our R was 10 ohms, our XL was 100 ohms, and our XC was 100 ohms. Now what we know about XL and XC in series is they will actually cancel each other out. They're occurring 180 degrees apart. Well, one of them is storing energy in the electromagnetic field, the other one's releasing from the electrostatic, and then vice versa. So they cancel each other out. So what happens in a circuit like this, the XL and the XC cancel each other out, which is gonna give us an X net of zero ohms. So they 100% cancel each other out, right? Our X net is zero ohms. Now in this example here, that would mean that my Z or my impedance over here, I'm just gonna write that over here, my Z here would actually only equal 10 ohms, okay? No problem. That would allow us to calculate the current in the circuit. So I equals E over Z. In this case, our current would be 10 amps, nice and simple. All right. So with that Z being 10 ohms, current being 10 amps, we now have 10 amps flowing through the circuit. 10 amps. Now, that's okay, that's fine and dandy, but we can agree right now with our X net equaling zero ohms, we could say with absolute certainty that that X net is actually at a minimum value. It'll never get smaller, then when my XL and my XC cancel each other out. With that being said, that also means that my Z is at a minimum value. My impedance of my circuit can never get smaller than it is right now. I have that resistance of 10 ohms. Unless I take that resistor out, my impedance will never be less than 10 ohms. No problem. Because my Z is at a minimum, when I calculate my current, that means it's at a maximum. Because we go I equals E over Z to calculate our current, if Z is at a minimum, my current is at a maximum. So this is the highest current you will ever get in a series RLC circuit without changing the devices, right? Without changing the source voltage or the actual components, it's the highest current you'll get when the frequency is so that your XL equals your XC. Awesome. Now what happens here, right? We have a maximum amount of current. We are gonna get voltage drops at all our devices, right? And this goes into a little bit about phasor diagrams and things like that, but stick with me. We would get 100 volts across that resistor. 
we would actually get 1000 volts across that inductor, right? 10 amps times 1000 ohms. And we would also get 1000 volts across my capacitor. Now that seems a little uh, unsafe, right? We only have a 100 volt source, but we're seeing voltage drops of 1000 volts across those two components. So a series RLC circuit can have very, very dangerous voltages, right? Super high voltages because we know volts equals amps times ohms. Because my current is at a maximum, it's gonna, it's gonna give me dangerous voltage drops across those, right? Imagine I'm an electrician, I've got a 600 volt meter. I walk up, measure my source is 100 volts. I think I'm safe. When I go up and I measure that inductor or I measure that capacitor and there's a thousand volts, my meter is going to explode, right? That's not a good situation. So no problem. So now we know these series RLC circuits are not safe. They're a very unsafe condition. Now, let's finish talking about what happens in the circuit. So our X net is a minimum, our Z is a minimum, our I is a maximum. That's going to make our power at a maximum as well. Right? Because power is I squared times R. We don't change the R, but our I is really high. It also is going to make our S at a maximum because we go E times I. We haven't changed that voltage, but because our current is at a maximum, our S is going to be at a maximum. Uh, yes, you could argue here our power factor would be 1. Uh, and that's okay, but again, we got to remember in this situation, when our XL equals our XC in a series circuit, it can create those unsafe conditions, right? So, uh, thanks for watching. That's kind of just my once over of a series resonant circuit. It's very different in parallel. It's not the same situation at all. So this resonant circuit only occurs in a series circuit. Thanks for watching.